Okay, let's have fun with percent. And a lot of you out there might be saying, okay, Mr. U2 Math Man, uh, you know, math cannot be fun. There is no such thing as fun math. Well, listen, I'm telling you right now that whether it is fun or not, you're definitely going to want to be good at percent because you just simply cannot uh, experience our real world uh, without seeing this symbol. If you go to the store, you're going to see this percent symbol everywhere. If you turn on the news, look at your cell phone, they're talking about interest rates, inflation, a lot of this uh, percent stuff has to do with money. So if you're interested in money, you probably want to be interested in knowing about percent. And uh, percent problems, okay, if you happen to be a math student, can come in all sorts of flavors. So we're going to go ahead and tackle this problem here. Of course, um, uh, it's a good idea for you to have a basic understanding of percent to do this problem. But let me go ahead and explain what the problem is. Okay, so what percent did the area change? So what are we talking about here? Well, here we have a rectangle, and this rectangle here has a certain area. Now, what's going to happen is the dimensions are going to change. So our um, length here, or our width, is going to be uh, decreased by 5%, and then our height is going to be increased by 25%. So that means we're going to come up with a new area, okay, because we have new dimensions. So the question is, what percent did the area change? I.e., we went from this area to this area. Did it increase? Did it decrease? And if uh, so, by what percent, okay? And I'm going to show you the specific answer here in a second. But if you think you could do this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Again, I'm going to show you the uh, actual answer here in a quick second, and then I'm going to walk through the solution to this problem. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, all of you can be successful in mathematics, especially those of you that are struggling. But what's necessary is that you have great math instruction, clear understandable and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, check out my math help program. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. I promise it will help you out big time. Also, most of you out there uh, may not even realize it. Uh, you're going to be taking an exam that has a dedicated math section on it. So I'm talking about entrance exams, placement exams, certification exams, uh, things like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam. I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you out. If you homeschool, I have a great homeschool program. Check that out for middle and high school mathematics. Hopefully, you have your own awesome math notes. If you do not, you need to work on this immediately as this is critical, uh, a critical skill to be successful in math. But I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as this helps me out big time. Okay, so let's get into this problem. And as promised, I'm going to give you the answer right now. Okay, so uh, uh, from here to here, well, once these dimensions here change in this uh, rectangle, the area increased by 18.75%. Okay, so this area, okay, increased uh, to this new area by 18.75%. Okay, so obviously, you're going to have to understand percent, and uh, let's just think about what do we need to do, okay? By the way, if you got the answer right, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face with an A-plus for being pretty awesome in math, but if you're, you know, didn't get it right, and you're like, okay, I'm not quite sure what to do, well, let me give you kind of the setup here, and I'm going to give you a bit of a hint to see if you can do this. All right, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to... Uh, decrease this length here, 20, okay, by 5%. Okay, so obviously you're going to have to figure out this little percent problem here. And then this 5, we're going to have to increase 5 by 25%. So what you want to do is do this, these two calculations, okay, come up with the dimensions of the new uh, rectangle, okay? So, uh, but before we get going, let me tell you what the area of a rectangle is. The area is equal to the length times the width, all right? So in this particular rectangle, if I wanted to find the area, 
I would just take this 20 and multiply it by that 5. So clearly that is 100. Okay, so you'll do the same calculation here, but you need the dimensions. Okay, so this is a lot of number crunching. Uh, so please feel free to use a calculator and don't do too many mental uh, steps. Okay, write this down on a piece of paper if you want to do this properly. And hopefully you come up with 18.75%. Okay, so I'm going to show you the actual work right now. And let's get to it. All right, so one of the formulas that you really want to know, you should just have this kind of in your um, your brain housing group. <laughs> That's a term we used to use in the Marine Corps. It's your computer, right? Your long-term memory. So the area of a rectangle is area is equal to length times uh, the width. So again, if you didn't know that, if you're, uh, or if you forgot that, this is one of these basic formulas that you should, you know, kind of commit to your long-term memory. So finding the area of this rectangle, super easy. Here's the length, here's the width. 20 times 5 is 100, okay, as I showed you previously. All right, but now we're going to have to figure out the dimensions of this new uh, rectangle. So let's focus in on this uh, new length right here. And the new length is uh, going to be 20 decreased by 5%. So we got to figure that out. Okay, so let's go ahead and just focus on this right now. So 20 decreases by 5%. Okay, so if something decreases by 5%, let me actually show you th this way. If I can get my eraser to work. There you go. All right, so let's say this is 100%. So here's 50% and here's 100%. Okay, and here's 0%, obviously. If something decreases by, goes down by uh, 5%, well, what are we really kind of thinking? Well, it's still how much percent of the total? Well, it's still 95%, okay? So there's a couple of different ways that you can look at a decrease of 5%. If 20 decreased by 5%, we can figure out what 5% of that 20 is and then subtract it away from 20. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. So 5% of 20 is what? Well, we got to change that percent to a decimal. So that is 5.0%. Remember, you move the decimal point over two places to the left. So that's 0 0.05, which is the same thing as dividing by 100. Okay, so we're going to take that decimal and multiply by 20. So that is 1. Okay, I didn't show that calculation here, but 5% uh, of 20 is 1. So 20 minus 1 is 19. Okay, so if 20 is decreased by 5%, it is 19. Or we can think of it this way, all right? Well, uh, that's another way to view a decrease of, of uh, 5%, and we want to know how much is remaining. Well, 95% of that 20 is going to be remaining. Okay, so we find 95% of 20, which of course is going to be 0.95, okay, of 20, you also get the same answer, 19. So um, either approach is uh, correct. Uh, of course, this um, approach right here requires less number crunching, okay? But the bottom line is that this dimension here now is 19, all right? So 20 was decreased by 5%, so the length here is 19. So now let's go ahead and work on this uh, height, okay? Now this is a little bit more interesting. So that 5, let's just uh, review, okay? 5 is going to increase by 25%. Okay, so what can we do here? Well... We can first figure out what 25% of 5 is. So we could do it this way. So 25%, of course, is going to be the decimal 0 0.25. So we can take that 0 0.25, multiply by that 5, okay? And that becomes 1.25, and then add it to the original amount, okay? So when we have an increase, so it's going to be the original amount, okay, plus the increase, all right? So don't forget that this increased 1.25. So don't just take 25% uh, of 5. We got to add it onto the 5 because we're keeping that 5 and we're increasing by 25%, which of course is that 1.25, which gives us a total of 6.25. All right, so that is our new height. Now, another way to look at this is that the, um, this 5, okay, when you're increasing by 25%, what you're doing is you're keeping 100% of what you have and you're going up another 25%. So you really uh, you really are figuring out 
what 125% of that number is, okay? So 125%, and when I move that decimal point over two places to the left, it's gonna be 1.25 as a decimal. So that's another way of looking at it. So 1.25 times five will also get us 6.25, okay? So either way, uh, you did this. Now, if you didn't understand this, you know, hopefully you get what I'm talking about because a uh, percent of increase and decrease is very, very important. But now we have our dimensions. We have 19 and 6.25. So let's go ahead and put that into our new rectangle. Okay, so our new length is 19. Our new height is 6.25. Now let's find the area by multiplying the length times the width. And um, so we get 19 times 6.25. So the area is 118.75. So you, obviously there was an increase. We went from 100 to 118.75. So now the question is, how much did this increase? Okay, well, got to know something about percent of increase. So what we want to uh, what we want to do here is find kind of in absolute terms how much did this go up? Well, we just take the difference, right? 118.75 minus 100 our area increased by 18.75. Okay, so uh, in a percent of increase, what are we gonna compare this increase to? You're gonna compare it to the original starting amount. So that's gonna be 18.75 uh, as compared to the original area of 100. This is going to give us how much um, the area went up, okay? Because remember, you're, you're starting from this um, rectangle here, this area, 100. Okay, so you're, when you're doing a percent of increase or decrease, you always compare that to the original amount. So 18.75 over 100, of course, is going to be 0.1875. You just, if you understand percent, this fraction out of 100 uh, is going to be 18.75%. Uh, but if you wanted to do it this way, 18.75 out of 100, like, oh, that's going to be the decimal 0.1875. Well, now i got to move this over two places to the right to get back to 18.75%. But percent of what? Uh, percent of increase. The area increased 18.75%. Okay, so how many of you out there get uh, got this problem right? Okay, if you were able to do this problem all on your own, I must uh, give you a very impressive 1982 Mohawk haircut. Okay, that was awesome. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you an A++, 120%, and multiple stars. Okay. Uh, now, way back uh, in the 80s, this was an impressive uh, haircut, but certainly not as impressive as your ability to do this problem all on your own. Now, if you understand this problem, the work, and you you know you weren't able to do it initially, well, you know that's the whole purpose of you know uh, of uh, me doing a video like this. Okay, math is about practicing and learning. Just because you don't understand something, that's actually a good thing. Okay, if you don't understand something, at least now you know what you need to work on. Okay, so that's why. When I say that anyone can be successful in math, you need great instruction and you need that commitment. Okay, you got to work at it, right? Math is a skill, and the more math you do, the better you will be. All right, hopefully this video helped you out. Don't forget to like and subscribe if that is the case. If you need more help with percent, I have a ton of percent videos on my YouTube channel. But um, if you want to uh, really formally learn percent with me and other concepts, I have three courses I'm going to recommend. One is my math foundations course. If you want, it's a little mini course for basic math, and arithmetic, and stuff. I strongly suggest that course for a lot of you out there, maybe getting back in a swing of thing, swing of uh, things in math. Maybe going back to school after a long period of time. Uh, so that's a great option. Uh, the two other courses I really teach percent is in my pre-algebra and algebra one course. You can check those uh, courses out as well. Just follow that link in the description of this video. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.